Good evening and welcome to another show of Free Media, Free Minds, uh, CTV's show looking at media and media freedom in South Africa today. Uh, uh, this evening we're going to look at the controversial secrecy bill and with me in the studio, uh, a member of parliament, Mario Ambrosini from the IFP and uh, Mary Hunter from the Right to Know campaign. So welcome gentlemen. You know you've been hearing about this bill for more than a year now. You've been hearing in incredible mixed messages from the ruling party and, and from the government. Uh, we had the state law advisor telling us more than a year ago that the bill was completely constitutional. Since then, it's been through a number of changes and the ANC has backtracked on a lot of what they had said. Then they said it was fine and ready to go before Parliament for voting. The day before that, they withdrew it, saying it needed more public consultation. And now we learn that in the next days, it's going to go back to Parliament for voting. No idea whether that public consultation has taken place or not. We invited them this evening to join us for the discussion. We thought an important moment of public consultation and they turned us down from a number of offices. So gentlemen, we're going to explore the bill together, but before we get into it, let's have a look at this insert. Hi, my name is Nguwa Mekedile. I'm the Western Cape coordinator of the Right to Know. Uh, we organized and mobilized society against the secrecy bill that is being suggested by the ANC um, in Parliament. Since we've started the campaign, um, what we've been faced with is a draconian law that has been proposed, you know, by the ad hoc committee in Parliament, led by the ANC, of course, that um, everyone in power would be would be author, author, will be given power to classify information as, as, as secret. And since then, thousands of South Africans came out in the street opposing, opposing that. And what we have now is, a, is, is the same bill, but less of the impact that it was initially suggested. Anything that affects our livelihoods, anything that affects our democratic rights, you know, that should be made public, you know. Um, issues around service delivery should be made public, you know, the, the, the waiting list, who owns land in Western Cape should be made public, you know, so that people know whether there's land or not, because government have a tendency of saying there's no land and, or they don't have budget. I mean, there are things that, look, everyone that is a, a public servant should expect that uh, information around them and what they do and the services they provide to society should be made public. Our biggest concern right now is the ANC's um, stance that it's going to take the, the discussion around the secrecy bill by itself to communities. Yes, we like that, we, we, we welcome that, but we know for sure that is just going to be another road show for the ANC where it's going to get its members to just clap and say, yeah, you know, we, we welcome this and whatever. Society should be questioning these public meetings what is there for the ANC to hide? Why are they so adamant in getting the secrecy bill passed? Let's get straight into the discussion. Mario, the ANC has, has alleged that the resistance and opposition to the bill is unwarranted. Does this bill pose a real threat to our democracy? Did it at the time when the campaigning began? Does it still? Let's, it's, been, it's been a very complex debate. Let's try to take this one piece at a time. First, uh, a bill was introduced by the minister, which was a terrific, terrible bill. The NC stood by that bill. They were not going to change it. They, they refused to negotiate until something happened. The, 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 the back of the resistance was broken. It was broken by public opinion. And the ANC in committee, began redrafting the bill. Mm. An enormous amount of progress has been done. What we have now is no longer a terrible bill. It's a probably good bill with a couple of terrible things inside, yeah. which need to be taken out. That's the first Let aspect. The second aspect is that this is, is one of the few occasions in which the public really got to understand yeah. what this was all about. And the whole of South African society 
is express the position. Yeah. We want to have a public interest defense. What does it mean if it is something that we uh, want Mar to know let me, about? Let me pause you there and bring yeah. Murray in. Of course, the Right to Know campaign was in many respects at the front of that mm -hmm. public mm -hmm. opinion shifting. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at the bill in some detail. The original bill gave every uh, body of state, from the local zoo to the bus company, mm -hmm. the power to classify information. The Right to Know campaign was saying we needed to lim limit the scope of the bill. Yeah. Have we achieved that? To some extent, I think there has been a lot of movement on that, where essentially, in the first draft, it said absolutely everyone would be given the power to make secrets. Now this has been limited to core state security bodies, your police, uh, national security, your M Ministry of Defense, but also, and then crucially, I think this is where it's important, there's an opt-in clause, which is potentially a backdoor, which says that the Ministry of State Security can also give that power to another organ of state if he deems it necessary. And I think when you see, for instance, the Ministry of Energy constantly making claims that what it does is a national security matter, there's a lot of fear that um, that, that opt-in clause can be used to spread that to a few other government bodies that really need to be exercising more transparency and have no business making secrets. So in fact, the Mario, the law has limited the scope, but the minister retains the power to give the right to classify to who he or she sees fit? Yes, I, I challenged the, the Honorable Landers from the NC to take a wager with me that within two years, uh, a very large number of uh, departments will be asked uh, by cabinet to opt in. So it shrank but it can expand again mm. if political will wants it to be so. Yeah. And there are many dynamics at place. The national intelligence plays a very important and very influential role in cabinet. So effectively a memorandum which comes from national intelligence of Minister of State Security, identifying this department, that department, that department is requiring to be able to classify the information. Mm. It's not going to be opposed by anyone. Yeah. So I don't look at that is a major concession. The major mm. concession f for me is what it is that can be classified, not by whom. Yeah. And, and it, how, do we, how do we, the people, deal with what is classified? Yeah. Now, of course, Mari, when, when, when we started campaigning against this bill, uh, the bill classified anything that was in the national interest, mm. which could really have been anything. Since then, the bill has, the, what can be classified has been limited. Yeah. Uh, are you satisfied with the current limitations? I, I think the limitations have been important because uh, it, it, that's really the crux of the bill, is how do you justify what can be made uh, secret? And now it's a, a pretty strictly defined uh, a notion of national security is the only justification for making secrets, um, which essentially says that national security, it, information can be made secret to protect the citizens of South Africa from uh, attacks from foreign armies and you know the threat of violence from from subversive elements, but the, again the, the, there's certain uh, elements of that definition that do concern us, where it says you can classify information to protect the exposure of economic secrets that are vital to the republic. And to date, I've never actually heard a, a proper justification for what is an economic secret that should be classified to protect us. How do you justify that as a national Mario, security matter? National security is the, is the definition tight enough? Okay, let me, let me take it from a different viewpoint. Everyone recognized that there was a problem. It, uh, no matter how tightly you define, it's never going to be tight. At the end, national security is what the state deems it to be because it is its security oh. and its security of the state. So looking at this problem, the NC response has been Fine, there is a problem, let's, let's create a watchdog within government eh, which makes sure that, there is no, that, 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 that the bill doesn't get abused. So they agreed, and we all worked on that, on a so-called independent, which is not so independent, review, classification review panel. These are the guys within the government eh, who make sure that the other guys within the government eh, don't abuse the power which mm. is given to the government. Fine. But we wanted something else. We wanted the power of the citizen through the media, through the NGOs, through its own right to challenge secrecy. And in, on this issue, the whole of South Africa, as I was saying, has come together and understood it clearly. If it is something that it is our interest to know, and there is a public interest to know it, we want to know about it. 
And that interest must be able to override whatever interest the state has in keeping it secret. There, there, that was the first major difference. And everyone came out from Cosalto to the religious groups and the, the right to no campaign in defense of the public interest defense. Huge debate. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Then the second aspect, which I brought forward very forcefully, is the public domain defense, the American model, mm. where, there, where if once something has been leaked out, the guy who leaks it out may go to jail. The second guy doesn't go to jail, whether it's a journalist, mm. whether it's a politician, or whether it's a member of the public. What we have in this bill and state, it's a duty on the entire group of citizens to keep things secret, eh? mm. even after they've been leaked out of the safe. They need to bring them back to the police. They cannot no. discuss them. Even if they look at them, they need to ask for their declassification before they sure. can publish them. So, so Mary, the, the bill still criminalizes whistleblowers and the public who handle classified no, information. If I, if maybe I, Shoot. I, I feel if you've spent too much time in Parliament, it's easy to get wrapped up in, in the language that they use. If you want it in plain language, Please. if I am a government official, I give you a document that, you're not, that I'm not supposed to give you. In this bill, if I give it to you, you face prison sentences as well as me. Yeah. You give it to your wife, she faces prison sentences. The, the people who harbor you are also guilty of harboring, harboring right. an information terrorist, and they face uh, prison sentences right. as well. So it's every link of the chain. So it's not, for instance, the WikiLeaks, uh, the WikiLeaks saga, this fellow in the, in the US military, he leaks documents to Julian Assange at WikiLeaks. He faces prison sentences in the US. Yeah. They can't touch WikiLeaks, though. Right. They are protected in Be this because bill. Because there's yeah. a public domain defense. Well, there is, you see, in America is different. And this is what they say there is, uh, yeah. uh, uh, is not this, uh, they argue it was not the same. But systems work differently. In America, there is the First Amendment. And it's the First Amendment in the Constitution, the one that comes before anything else. It says, Congress shall pass no law on the press. So you can't touch the press for as long as the press conduct activities. That has... Uh, the result of creating a public domain defense. When something has left the secrecy, when Julian Assange, the New York Times, or any, anyone else gets hold of it, it's gone. You can't, you, you lost the secrecy. What you have in this bill is an obligation to, which forces the citizens under enormous sanctions to help the state to keep its secrets yes. secret. Yeah. So and what, if they get their secrets out, we need to bring them back and put yeah. them back into the safe. That's all absurd. It's, right. a, it's a securocrat mindset mm. yeah. from the 19th century, which must not survive yeah. into the 21st century. So, we, so the current bill says that not only the person responsible for keeping the secret should be punished, yeah. but in fact anyone who handles the secret and obligates us, the citizens of South Africa, if we do find ourselves in possession of classified information, to go straight to the police and hand ourselves mm -hmm. in, or face really outrageous prison yeah, sentences. And, and a public mouth, interest That's defense it. doesn't even come into that. No. And we, when we get back from the break, we're going to look at more about why a public interest defense is important, as well as some other aspects of this bill. We're discussing the secrecy bill on free media, free minds. It's going before parliament on Wednesday, and uh, well, that's the rumor that they'll be voting it in again, and we'll be back straight after this. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. This evening we're looking at the controversial secrecy bill, uh, rumors that it will be back in Parliament on Wednesday where the ANC again will try and vote it into law. Uh, before the break we were looking at a public domain and public interest defense. Why is it so important that the bill should have a public interest defense and a, a defense it currently doesn't have? Mark. Please. Oh, Mark, Mark, okay, go for I'm going to take this one. Um, look, I think that the, the, the crucial reason that you need a public interest defense is that with all the other protections and limitations that are put in the bill, 
there's still the potential for abuse of power. There's still the potential that something will be classified that shouldn't be classified. Or maybe it's going to be something that, that is a legitimate national security matter that still shouldn't be classified. For instance, uh, the, government purchase, purchase an, uh, the government purchases a high-tech weapon, high weapon system, but there's corruption involved. A journalist should be able to publish that. It's a state secret, but they should be able to expose that yeah. and be protected from pros prosecution because they're serving the public good. They're serving social yeah. justice. A public interest defense says that you're exempted from prosecution if it can be shown that what you did was the right thing, yeah. even if you're breaking the law, essentially. Yeah. So, so the current law doesn't allow a public interest defense at all and the ANC is saying that there's no precedent in the world where there is a public interest defense. Are we asking for too much? See, again, that's a, a, a sort of a misstatement of law. And things work different in different countries in the world. In Canada, there is, <coughs> there is provision for a public interest defense. In the United States, you've got something similar through the right of the, free, of, of the press. But the real question here <coughs> is, are we writing a law within the mold of uh, the bygone era of secrecy? Or dare we write a law for the present time, which is the right of information? We, you know, we, we are in the age of WikiLeaks. We are in the, late, in the age of Julian Assange. You, Julian Assange has changed the world. We live in a world in which the citizen is no longer any secret. You and I are not allowed to keep anything secret from the government. Our financial life, our transactions, how, many money, how much money we have, we, we get rica and we get fica. The same standard must apply to government. Mm. The sovereign must come as clean as the citizen is now required to come. This is the world we live in. So I'm not concerned about precedents, but there are many, many precedents. The issue is that we need to look at the South African context. The South African context is one, has been one characterized constantly of deviance of the secret services. Mm. All the way during apartheid to recent days yeah. where the secret services were involved in the making and the unmaking of a president. Yeah. Nothing could have been more deviant, more political. Yeah. This will continue and can only exist under cloud of secrecy. It has happened in France, it has happened in Italy, it has happened in the United States with the Iran-Contra scandal. It has happened in the United Kingdom. For us to prevent this from happening, time and time again, yeah. we need to flash the light in the dark corners yeah. of secrecy. Mary? Before we discuss the, the huge issue of our own shadowy secret uh, security spy services, is. our spy services, and, and, and how they're re running amok in our democracy. There's another point that needs to be made when uh, the defenders of the secrecy bill say, but there's no public interest def uh, defense in other laws, in other countries. Our constitution says everyone has the right to access information. Everyone has the right to a free press. What it says is that the, the dignity and the rights of a whistleblower will be protected because it's in the interest of everyone that we protect those people. Mm. And a law that fails to live up to those standards is a law that can't sit on our statute books. Absolutely. It's out of keeping with, with, with everything Absolutely. that has been fought for. Now, the original bill, when it was bef uh, before the committee, pretty much exempt the spies, the security agencies, from any kind of oversight. Have we seen uh, changes in that aspect of the bill, or is it still a uh, matter for concern, Murray? I think that ultimately this bill still gives too much muscle to our security services. It says that if the state security services have classified information, there are higher penalties. There's even less protection for whistleblowers. And the real concern here is that, um, I, I mean, as Mario said, we have spooks running all over the show in our political landscape, gathering information on one faction of political leadership, feeding it to another, playing off each other. It's essentially, the, the, the spy services belong in the hands of a political and economic elite. They do not belong to the people of South Africa. And this is a law that I'm really concerned gives more muscle to a group that needs to be, essentially, as, as, as uh, Mario said, that we need to be shining uh, a, a light on these guys and really seeing what they're up to and what's going on in the shadows. M Mario, what kind of law and oversight do we need for spies in a democracy? 
you see again I this was a bad bill it became a very good bill a lot of uh, with some terrible things inside we need to take out those terrible things and there are three or four I I've heard many criticism about this bill as it stands now many of them are not warranted and I want to say that we need to have a public domain defense we need to eliminate all these absurd obligations imposed on the citizen we need to eliminate this absurd notion of hostile activity where fine you you breach secrecy you go to jail but if you do that to benefit somebody else if you do that to benefit a foreigner then it's espionage if you do that to damage the state then it becomes hostile activity now how can you have a crime or with of hostile activity to that which is the requirement of damaging the state in leaking a piece of information which is protected in the first place uh, not to damage the state mm. so uh, there are a number of contradictions within this bill, in the bill absurdities uh, merely because intelligentees no. uh, the language of intelligence apparatus mm. has, mm. has been translated no. into legalese and, yeah. and rationality came out of this yeah. so these things need to be fixed and can be fixed now the ANC has walked a long path from where they were at the beginning of this process. Somehow s somebody has drawn a line to them and said that's far and no farther. They must find the courage of walking the extra yeah. mile because that's what the country was, wants. And, and we've seen in the, re in the media recently that the deputy president is hinting that he would be open to a public interest defense. So I think the, 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 the different campaigns and public pushes to reform this bill have borne fruit and there is uh, encouraging signs that we could go the extra mile to get the kind of secrecy law that's appropriate for a democracy. Let but me. Murray, the Right to Know campaign has also said that secrecy bill or no secrecy bill, there is a state of secrecy in South Africa. Mm. W what do you mean by that? I think uh, I in some sense, the secrecy bill is like an earthquake that woke you up in the middle of the night and you discovered that your house has been built on a fault line the whole time. Because right now the secrecy bill with all the amendments has been confined potentially strictly to national security matters. At one time it said that there would be more secrecy in communities, more secrecies at, sort of at every level of government. But the truth is, and this is where the community-based organizations and the social movements that are driving the Right to Know campaign have come to the fore, is that we're already struggling with secrets. We're already struggling with access to information. We have this wonderful law called the Promotion of Access to Information Act. It's our Freedom of Information Law. It says every citizen has the right to access information from government, from the private sector. But if you look at the implementation of that law, you discover that two-thirds of the time you'll write to the, to the government or to a company saying, I need this information and they will just ignore you. Yeah. And we, we realize that in our municipalities you have secrecy there because you can't get information from government, you can't find out uh, whether they're spending their budget, you can't find out if your councillor owns a business in the community that he's giving business to uh, in his role as councillor. Yeah. You, you, you have secrecy at ESCOM. So you, you, you couple that with yeah. the kind of intimidation mm. that whistleblowers face. And you have, Mario, would you agree, quite a high level mm. of secrecy already in our democracy? Yeah, I mean, everything gets classified. The nice thing about, about the, the present situation is that everything is unconstitutional. It's classified in terms of a document which itself is, is secret. It's classified in terms of a secret law which you cannot receive. It's called the minimum security uh, standards. So we, are, we have agreed that we don't have a secrecy law now. Uh, what a, a, point, a final point which I think is very important to make because this is a taste for our democracy. All the people of South Africa have spoken saying what they want. If they don't get it, then the entire political process uh, has proven itself to be just choreography. Mm. Because here the whole of civil society has been united on a single request put to the yeah. political apparatus. If we if we, South African civil society, don't get our way on this issue, then we can forget about parliamentary democracy. Mm. Mm. And this is a test that everyone understands. That's why I think it's yeah. so important that people come to parliament when this bill is going to be debated. Yeah. Let the politician hear your voice, yeah. which has not been heard. 
however it takes, it's time to have some radical yeah. politics uh, and people being heard because otherwise the next time around, you get, a, yeah. you get away one time, you do it over and again. And this yeah. time it shouldn't get away. Yeah, I think as you've said, this is a test for our democracy and to date, the people of South Africa have done us proud. They've really risen up with a single voice to say we don't want the spies running our country, we don't want secrets. And the last push could well be this week. And as you've said, it would be wonderful if our viewers at home in Cape Town were to come to Parliament to observe the democratic process and send a clear message that the secrecy bill in its current form should not be passed. So on that note, I want to thank you guys for coming in. I think it's been a very interesting discussion. Again, it's a pity an ANC, which is saying they want public consultation on the secrecy bill. They're not acknowledging any of the faults that, that you gentlemen have outlined for us. They say they want public consultation. We invited them to join us today and uh, they couldn't uh, honor our invitation. It's been a, perhaps a, a poorer conversation for that reason but I think we've done well in informing you at home what are some of the outstanding issues in the bill that still need to be addressed before it's passed into law. And on that note, I want to thank you for watching Free Media, Free Minds. The program was brought to you by CTV, the Friedrich Ebert Stichting, and the Alternative Information Development Center. Good night, until next week, take care. I have the idea of a Hey!